we need or will ever need. But though he is all powerful, he does not use his power to manipulate us to obedience. Only by love is love awakened. And then Mark Finley um, says, he added a line. He says, love can never be forced, coerced, or legislated. Love can never be forced, coerced, or legislated. And mark you, in the reference I drew earlier, I do understand that it is because you know what your children don't know and you see what they don't see that sometimes you, you, you know, do it the way you do it, right? But the lesson guides us, yes. brethren. Only love gives birth to love. <laughs> love, again, love cannot, can never be forced, coerced, nor legislated. And then the next question comes and says, and somebody said, Pastor, so why after iniquity was found in um, Lu Lucifer, God never just destroyed him? Why didn't the Lord wipe him out? And there's a simple answer for that. Grace. Grace. And I give you that answer and somebody say, but we are getting hurt. No, God should have still destroyed the devil. I understand. That's human selfishness coming out. And it's natural until the Lord takes root in the heart. Why should you get grace and nobody else does? And we don't even have to strike that dichotomy between humanity and uh, Satan and his people. Because often we see that kind of behavioral pattern even among human beings. Why should God have waited for you he to hear so many sermons upon sermons upon sermons? From you're a child, you've been hearing the, the, the word of God. And you never accepted the Lord until you are 50. And you go out and you preach one sermon and they never accept you. And you, you pray, God, rain fire from heaven and burn them up. Right? And that's one of the challenges that I have with Adventists who believe that um, you should be so out of the world that you can't reach anybody in there. So God interceded with you for 50 years until you accepted the truth. But now you preach two sermons and nobody not, not accept the, the message. And you are flee the cities and run and live in the hills and the mountains with no plans of returning for evangelism. Because if you go and live up there and you come down and do mission and go back, fine. But God died to save the whole world. The countryside and the city. Right? And until probation closes, we are deployed as witnesses and missionaries. This gospel of the kingdom should be preached in the countryside. Huh? In all the world as a witness. Aren't the cities a part of the world? And then we, hey, I, I was talking to a friend of mine recently. And my friend was saying, man, um, you know, the writings of Ellen White have really, um, you know, affected the church. I said, no, the church has really affected the writings of Ellen White. We have abused the prophetic word to say what we wanted to say when we wanted to say it, even taking it out of context. And, allow, and many people have developed resentment for the prophetic word, not because of the word itself, but because of how we have abused it. Can I say amen? Say ouch. I'm going to take Brother Willie and then I'm going to take Elder McLean. Yes, um, <coughs> sorry. So, as a man who wasn't, as say, uh, born in the church, like some people would say, I have to always go back to where I first entered this church and the truth, the marvelous truth that I learned. And one of those basic Adventist texts 
uh, was Re Revelation 12, 17 that says, and <clears throat> says, and the dragon was wroth, yes. mad with the woman. Yes. That keep the commandment of God and meant to make war with her. Now, so we go back to war. Yes. And war is means somebody trying to kill somebody. Yes. He's not playing around. He's not joking around. I want to destroy you. So this war means bloodshed. It means killing. It means pain at whatever at my disposal I'm going to throw at you to destroy you. So that was the whole cooks of that what war means. And so we must understand that when we look at the conventional war between Ukraine and uh, Russia, is that Russia is trying to wipe out Ukraine altogether, which they would have done actually if Ukraine ever have the help from the United States and the other um, United Nations people. Um, so it goes to show you that what we are in, this controversy, this war, is continuing from then. Because, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So, <laughs> so hold it right there, Brother Willie. I'm going to just bring back and come back to you. As we established at the beginning of this study, and Revelation 12, 17, which you have quoted, brings it out ever so clearly, that the great controversy um, is battle between God and Satan. Mm -hmm. And Satan could care less about humanity. He don't business with us. But God has a vested interest in us, a love for us that the devil has observed. And so since he can't, beat God, he's seeking to injure God by injuring God's most valuable possession. So Revelation 12, 7 says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels mm. fought. Revelation 12, 17 says that the devil now being defeated by Michael and his right. angels and cast down, went to make war with the people of God. Oh, yes. All right. In an effort to continue war against God. So he's no match for God. He's like a man who came to fight you, Brother Willie, well, to, to fight me. And, <laughs> and, he, and he lost the battle. And he kidnaps, let's say, a child of mine in an effort to get to me. That's right. All right? So that's the sort of picture yes, that the great controversy uh, paints. A battle between, and we cannot forget it, don't get feel too important. This, uh, this is not about... Us is a battle between God and Satan. We are caught in it because yeah. God loves us yes, sir. and the devil knows it. So the devil seeks to hurt us in an effort to hurt God. All right. Thank you, brother. I'm going to take you. Elder Mark and then oh. Sister, Ro Sister Flowers. I also want to give yes. <laughs> All right, sure. I, I was told I have two minutes left. I, I was but, trying, sorry, but you can all come back to Bible class. We can talk all day when you come back to Bible class later and take up at the study element. I was trying to get back to the first part of it for as Adventists, when we speak on this fact of the controversy, we bring all that we know mm -hmm. into the discussion to the point where we can't get to the point of war in heaven. We know all the other part of it, but how is it yes. that war is in heaven? It's a place of peace uh -huh. and tranquility. You say you want to make it practical so we we'll understand. So as we deal with one another, we will understand what causes yes. the, dis dis the um, disturbances. Yes, we know Satan, but no, 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 no. We know it was Lucifer, not Satan. That's I, correct. I mean, we, 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 we have not grasped uh -huh. that part of it. And perhaps never will. <laughs> yeah. It was Lucifer, it's not Satan. It was no dragon either. Mm -hmm. It was Lucifer. I, I keep on saying that for a reason. Yes. For, for, for we're talking about a covering cherub. cherub. Yes. Somebody so close something. Uh, Creature close to God's side. Uh -huh. Someone God loves. Someone God cherished. He was wonderful. As I said, until iniquity. God didn't just blot him out. 
But there's a reason why he wasn't black now. We've been discussing it. And it's the same application we ought to be using as we deal with, with each one other. another. That is correct. And, and, and many times we don't get it. Uh, I've been called naive many times, Pastor, naive. But I know where God has taken me from. That's correct. As I listened to the sermon last night, too, it, it came, it came, it came, it came, it came. That love is not something that we talk. Uh -huh. Love is the character of God expressed in our lives. So when someone does me something wrong, why do I have to hit back? I'm going to go give it to you, Pastor. But um, <laughs> promotions in church. Mm, that's what I wanted to talk about. Promotions in church doesn't make me the ruler of the church. No. <laughs> yes, it's nice to be promoted to an elder as I am. Elder Mark. Oh, yeah, I got it going. But understand that there is still one above me. Amen. This is God's church. Amen. And I am asked to make sure I treat God's people right. That's correct. The same hands that brought me in. Same hands will take you out. So, so, so as we look at this, let us really get to the practicality why war was there. But I can't see it. Uh -huh. Why war was in heaven. God bless. Thank you, Elder Mark. Thank you so much. Who's handed that yeah, now? Yes. yes. Um, so, at the end of the text, it says, to make war with those that keep the commandment of God. What was it about the commandment? Because it seems as if those were the only people that Satan was at war with, the church of God. So, we see, we see here that, uh, yes, Thanks for the courage, and God did not make Satan. <laughs> he made Lucifer. That's correct. And uh, the pride that he had that he couldn't change because the Bible said God be along with him. You know, pleading with him. Um, grace. I don't go grace. to you, but yes. I won't point that out. Yes, grace. <laughs> grace is not a New Testament phenomenon. Yes. yes. Neither did grace begin with humanity. Yes. yes. When Lucifer and the angels he deceived uh, missed the mark. Yes. They too were, were recipients of, of grace. grace. Yes. God could have wiped yes. them out, yes. but they too received grace. Yes. Again, brethren, grace is not a New Testament phenomenon. All right, thank yes. you. Sorry, brother. Yes. So he said that um, God himself, he's talking about the unchanging nature of God's law. He said God himself has established the order in heaven, and in departing from it, Lucifer would dishonor his maker and bring ruin upon himself. But the warning given in infinite love and mercy only arose a spirit of resistance. So that also bring the war because he was resisting. You see? And, and there are two words that was used. Rebellion, the same that describes Saul when he, he rejected the word of God. Uh, it was rebellion and stubbornness. Yes. Right? And he said that uh, stubbornness, uh, I think, is idolatry. And I don't know what he idolized. Was it himself? Yes. It must be. You know, he idolized himself. And, and the pride that he has, he couldn't come down from where he was. And the same thing happened to us, where we cannot admit where we are wrong. Yes. And that's pride. And then it, and, and the Bible did tell Peter that if your brother sin against you and you repent, he said you should forgive him. You know, and we know what that will, will forgive, even if they don't repent. But repentance means that a person is sorry for what they did. And if we cannot reach a place of repentance, then it's very bad. That's because correct. we cannot be forgiven. That's correct. Elder, you had a point? Yes, um, Pastor. I wanted to, Elder McLean touch on it too. I wanted to say that um, Isaiah spoke of, you know, the way Isaiah, the book of Isaiah um, spoke of Lucifer. You know, he was perfect in every way. You know, after creation, he was beautiful. He walked upon the the, the, the fires and and the, all this. He was adorned in all these different mm -hmm. stones and things. So he has a very high place in heaven. Yes. So he was someone who the angels look up to. Yes. So it was easy for him to influence some of the angels. Yes. 
And likewise, when I look at us here, it is easy for some of us as elders, we have to be particular about what we say to our brethren. Because what we say to them can affect them in a negative or a positive light. So we have to be careful when we are placed in positions. Even on our jobs, folks, we have to be careful yes. because we look to some folks on our jobs that are in high places and we believe what they say to us when it's not necessarily true. I, I, I was listening to the service, I wasn't here last night, but um, with Brother Antonio was giving a testimony and for some of these persons that you work with that are not like us, you know, and they will do things to lead us astray. So we mm -hmm. must be careful in how we place our trust, you know, in some of these people who are very influential above us in, in different jobs. That is correct. So God has called us to be stewards of our influence, Amen. all of us. Amen. And the stewardship of influence is just as important as the stewardship of time, temple, treasure, and talents. It's the flowers. Yeah. And um, they're telling me that I'm not a good steward God of, of time. wisdom and love. <laughs> God of wisdom and love. If God had immediately blotted so out like Satan there. from existence, heaven and earth would serve him in, not in love, but in fear. That is correct. That is correct. And a big point that in a sister flowers, but we will come back to it when, I, when we come back for um, Bible class later on because my time is done but i just want to remind the church that we are in the midst of a spiritual warfare and that is why recently i, I haven't made it here yet but recently in uh when i worked in iad there was the introduction of um prayer coordinators prayer co and i had a problem with it because as far as I'm concerned and my understanding of the scriptures, prayer is not a program to be coordinated. Prayer is spiritual combat. It's, it's warfare. So we are, for those who pray, called to be prayer warriors, watchmen and women on the walls of Zion. Because the battle we fight is bigger than us. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal hello and but the servant of the lord says that the prayers of the saints shift the arm of omnipotence into action we have absolutely no power against the devil but our god has absolutely all power above the devil and when we pray we shift those all powerful hands into battle into action on our behalf and that is why it is so concerning that the church prays so little and on that note i just want to remind the church that today is day of prayer and fasting and as we go throughout the day you will find that our program is amended as it were to that end let me close with this uh, the scripture reading again the memory text again. Revelation 12, 79 says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the reminder that we are no match for the devil, but he is no match for you, and we have access to you through prayer. Help us, Lord, to make use of that advantage that we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, it's a choice. You got to choose whether to open or let it remain closed. At this time, we're going to ask Tatiana, one of our servers, to come forward and welcome all our guests.
Is Tatiana available? Come on. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all of us who came out this morning to dine with us at Choices Dining Hall. We hope you have enjoyed the meal, all the fancy dishes. Let us know how tasty these dishes are if you want to have a repeat of them because remember, your price, free, zero dollars. But for our father, it cost him everything. We will now have special music in our dining hall from Sister Maddie.
thank you. Well, this brings us to the end of our dining experience. We really hope you had a good time at Choices Dining Hall, and we are inviting you to come back again. In closing, let me remind you that it's a choice to confess before men your Father God. Because if we confess him before men, Jesus will confess us before the Father. The power of choice cause our Father to put into plan the plan of salvation from the genesis of time. It is almost time for the Lord to come. Will you choose to follow him? What about me? Will I choose to follow him? The choice is yours. The choice is mine. Today, if you hear his voice, if I hear his voice, let us not harden our hearts, but let us choose to follow God. Let's say like Joshua, as for me and my house, we are choosing to follow the Lord. This has been the end of Sabbath school. I was happy to serve you. We will now pass over to personal ministries. Thank you. Have a blessed Sabbath day. I can feel the presence of the Lord in this place. What do you say? Amen. It's so wonderful to see. You know, after last night, message, which was titled what? Do not leave Jerusalem. Man, if you weren't here last night, you missed something. I hope you watch it online. I am yours truly, Brother James, personal ministries uh, appointed leader. And I want to say before I go into anything that let me remind all the newly baptized and the people who responded to the altar call that we want to give you the support that you need. So you should, if you didn't get a call yet, please expect one. We'll have Sister Sergeant, who is our secretary, personal ministry secretary, will call you so we can organize to give you the support. We do not want to leave one person behind. So we will work with you as much as you will allow us, right, to call you. We are available to have prayer with you, to visit you in your homes, all right, and um, do whatever we can as you get on this journey, spiritual journey, we want to make sure that we get the follow-up care so that you will not be discouraged or allow discouragement to get a, the upper hand of you so that you, you know, lose your way, stop coming to church. Because this is, somebody says, an old song that says it's a hard road to travel. It's a mighty long way to go. And we want to make sure that you know that you're important to us. And as family, we want to make sure that all our family members are well taken care of. Um, and, you know, I, I was thinking how the Spirit of God works. Because one thing the pastor says last night is that we must get ready for what? What did he say? Get ready for what? What, what, did he, what term did he use in regard to the airplane? What did he say? What? Take off, man. Get ready for take off. And he says that, um, he says that um, we have to set our houses in order. And that's part of our theme. Family and church, revival and reformation. So the revival and reformation must take place in the individual heart and minds. So that it will happen in the homes. It don't make sense trying to bring the gospel to the world or bring the world people into the church. And we are not ready. Right? It doesn't make sense. So we are always interested in encouraging our brethren to make sure one of the things we suggested was that you should have family time, quality time, when families turn off all the electronic devices, no TV, no phone, just say every day, 6 o'clock or 6.30, let's meet family time. Give family members the time to exchange thought. You as the leader in the church or the, on the host, the father, the mother, 
have to initiate the, the conversation so that you get a feel and people get a, cho a chance to express themselves. Your children, your spouse, whatever, compliment to each other, right? You have to have that. In your, in your workplace, they always have what? They have, um, what do they call it, meetings from, from time to time where they discuss what's going on, bring everybody up to speed, make sure everybody is on the same page. It has to be like that in the home. Many times, uh, strangers outside know more about what's happening in the home than those are in the home. Many times in the home, we only sh live under the same roof, eat out of the same pot, but we are still strangers. Many people in their own homes are, are lonely because we are, we are not connected. We don't have a relationship. So that's why we're encouraging you. And that's why we are here, to encourage each other. Right? God bless you. And I'm going to ask Sister Madeline Henry to come now as she want to talk to you. God bless you. And remember, we are always here for you. You can reach out to me or any member of personal department and our pastor and the elders, whoever. So we are here to support you. Don't ever think we'll be too busy so that you don't want to call us or disrupt us. Not about that. Bigger than us. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. My name is Sister Henry, and I represent the Family Life Department. Just three quick announcements. Family Life has been participating with families with their babies' um, dedication. So on behalf of the Family Life Department, we are so thankful to these families who allow us to do so. Last week, we had Sister Ruby Prince and Sister Kame march up um, with the families. Today we'll be having another baby dedication and Sister Kerry and Boudou will be marching up with these families. Our goal is not to march there and look pretty, but it's evangelism. And our goal is to bond with these families and to see how we can help them both spiritually and physically. Do we want to grow as a family? Amen. Okay. On this Wednesday coming, April 10th, Family Life Department will be in charge of her meeting. You do not want to miss it. We're going to have a wonderful presentation and we're going to have something special for everyone. So this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., Family Life will be right here in the building conducting her meeting. Also on April 27th, um, the last Sabbath of this month, Family Life will be in charge of AY. You do not want to miss it. It promises to be a blessing to each and every family. When the family is not growing, what happened to the church? Have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, a glorious and a happy Sabbath to you. My name is Julian Grant and the clerk for the month of April. Please pay close attention to today's announcements and our upcoming events. Prayer and fasting is every first Sabbath and will begin at 2 p.m. today and every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. To join, call 667 Seven seven zero one three eight one. A big shout out and thank you from the Children's Ministry to everyone for supporting Children's Day last Sabbath and from the Calvary Pathfinder Generals to everyone for supporting the induction service last Sabbath evening and their bun drive for Gillette, Wyoming. Whether you donated funds or purchase a bun, we appreciate your support. Please continue praying for and encouraging our children. Have you been enjoying the weekly Bible studies? Today is no exception. Please be back for an in-depth, interactive Bible class at 4.30 p.m., followed by AY and Vespers to close the Sabbath. Elders Board, you are invited tomorrow for a virtual meeting at 10 a.m. sharp. Join us tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. at Calvary as we end our April Evangelistic Weekend Series. Remember, invite and bring a friend with you. Please see your bulletin for all the upcoming events. The thought for the week is taken from John 11, verse 35. Jesus.
Jesus wept. May the joy and the blessings of the Sabbath be yours today and always. Happy Sabbath, Sister Sophie. Happy Sabbath, Maddie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? After last night, I'm great. No, I'll tell you. Brethren, if you weren't in the sanctuary last night, you missed something. Mm. I trust and I'm encouraging each one who wasn't here to just go back this evening at lunch and watch it online. It was riveting, it was profound, and it was on point. Honestly, it was amazing. I was so happy I was able to experience that, especially being able to talk to you about it later, Sister Sophie. And now I'm here with you this morning. Honestly, church, I'm excited for today too. I am very excited. Um, some of my um, takeaways last night was, because you know the series is about evangelism, is that we can't evangelize unless we are in tune with the Holy Spirit. And God uses any one of us as long as we avail ourselves to be used, no matter who we are, where we're from, he equips the call. Amen. And honestly, Sister Sophie, I'm ready to get my takeaways from today. Oh, yes. Church, I know you guys are greatly and ready to hear what the pastor has to say today. Very excited. I know those who are online on YouTube have clicked in, are in the chat, ready to talk and ready to listen to what the word, what God has bring through his people today to say. We also have people online on Zoom who are here to listen in. You know, maybe the YouTube isn't working, but Zoom sure is. Sure. And we are here to listen to the word. You know, if you have, if you would like to get online, even while you are in person, you can always go to Calvary Media and go to our website, click a couple and a few couple of links, and you'll be right there, right here, ready to listen, ready to learn, be able to give a like and a subscribe, to share with your family members, everyone, you will have the ability to listen to God wherever you are. Amen. So I hear there are some baptized members today too, Sister Sophie. Oh, isn't God just working? Brethren, we just want to congratulate them. I'm not sure who the person or persons are yet, but if you are in the congregation, know that it's the best decision that you could ever make to follow Christ because very soon the signs, most of us experienced that earthquake yesterday and there was a tremor a little later on in the afternoon. It's showing and we heard about Taiwan earlier this week that Jesus is going to come. So my encouragement or encouragement is let's stay ready. Honestly, and as we're growing older, we're learning more about God. Day by day, we get older. Birthdays come and pass. Anniversaries come and pass. And day by day, we're learning more about God. Are there any birthdays coming up? Oh, yes. We have a few coming up this week. They are as follows. Elaine James, Azani Samuel on the 7th of April. Ramon Henry William Snell Jr. on April 9th. Joshua St. Cloud on the 10th. And Joy Soares on the 11th. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. And may God continue to bless you richly. Wow, that was amazing. I'm happy that these people have, you know, grown in God and grown with their relationship with God. And now we're here with this weekend. It is evangelism weekend. Oh, yes. Every, yes. almost, for the, every day for this weekend, Sister Sophie. Oh, yes. I yes. get to see your wonderful pace. I get to hear pastor talk. Yes. And honestly, I get to feel God fill my heart. Amen. And I want to welcome everyone who is here in person, on YouTube, watching live, and in Zoom on this amazing experience of Evangelism Weekend. Yes. On that note, we transition with the word. On that note, we transition with the words of George Herbert. Prayer should be the key of the day and the lock of the night. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and amen. Happy Sabbath.
Sabbath Church. Lord God Almighty, none is as mighty as you. In all things, you are faithful, O Lord. You rule over the powerful sea. You calm its angry waves. Heaven is, your, heaven is yours, the earth also. You made the world and everything in it. How powerful are you? How great is your strength? Your kingdom is founded on righteousness and justice. Love and faithfulness are shown in all you do. How happy are the people who worship you with songs, who live in the light of your kindness. Church, the church is called to worship. grateful that one more time we are in your presence to give you praises and on today I pray that if there is anything that hinders all praises that you'll remove it in the mighty name of Jesus so that your people will know that there is a God we pray that you will consecrate us now for worship as we say you're welcome in this place in Jesus name Amen. seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to welcome you into the house of God today. I want to welcome you, those in the physical space. And I want to welcome you seated in our virtual pews. We are delighted, honored, and blessed beyond measure.
to be gathered in his house to magnify his name and to worship him. I crave your indulgence as we handle some clerical and housekeeping matters. And even as we do so, I know the hosts did a fine job with the birthday greetings, but I reserved this one for myself. Today is Sister Lynette Walker's birthday. Yeah, so I didn't want the host to do that because they speak in the past tense and in the future tense. But today I speak in the present tense and I want to say happy birthday, Sister Walker. She's seated in the balcony and in a very special way, happy birthday to all the April celebrants. <laughs> Good morning, church. Um, this morning, um, the board recommends the following positions to be voted. Um, Doreen Kurth as stewardship leader. All right. Sister Doreen could, yes. This is, all right. Recommended. Some of them didn't see you, Sister Doreen. Could you stand again? All right. Recommended by the board to serve as stewardship leader for this tenure of leadership. I'm going to entertain a motion from the church that we accept the recommendation from the board. Is there a motion? Moved and seconded. Uh -huh. All those in favor, please indicate by the uplifted right hand. Those opposed, same sign. One opposition noted. The motion is carried by a majority vote. Uh, notwithstanding, we'll give due consideration to the opposition. All right. We have Mabel Reed, Honorary Deaconess, Patricia Robinson, and Colleen Ebang Shippey as Deaconess, and Garf Garfield Earl as Deacon. All right, so um, I'm going to entertain a motion that we accept this additional recommendation from the board. This is Mabel Reed as honorary deaconess, Patricia Robinson and Colleen Ebang Shippey as deaconesses, and Garfield Earl as deacon. Is there a motion? Moved. Is there a second? Seconded. All those in favor, uplifted right hand. Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Unanimous vote. Now we have the first reading of transfer of membership for Beverly Nivians from Calvary to Lithonia Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lithonia, Georgia. All right, is Sister Beverly here? No. Oh, she's already in Georgia. No, this is not one of the um, membership directions that I am particularly happy about. I love when memberships are moved to my church. <laughs> but the motion is not quite the same when um, our members are moving elsewhere. But we understand the circumstances are very diverse that could result in a request for a transfer of membership away from our congregation. And so that's first reading. We take the, first, the second reading on next Sabbath, and then we will vote. Um, we have some baptism certificates um, for our newly baptized and um, certificate of rebirth. Um, we have Malachi Murray, and um, if they could come up, come up when your name is called, Malachi Murray, 
Jonathan Ruffin Sr. Arlene Gutsmore. Sharika Bev Bevco, sorry if I mess your name up. Sharika Bevco and Lethia Lethia Williams. So, um, if you're here and you heard your name called as or to be a recipient of one of the baptismal certificates, I'm going to ask you to come. Well, I'm going to ask my leaders who are closest at hand to join me here as we welcome um, those who are here into fellowship and issue their um, certificates of baptism. Leaders closest at hand, let's join me here. As we sing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in this church but I'm glad I'm a part of the of God I have uh, another little one to be blessed so you know I made three new friends this week <laughs> so I'm gonna invite Um, Brother Daniel and his family to come. Give me which which one did I have printed? 
Which hymn did I have printed? In? For the baby, did lead them, my God, to thee. Give me, um, lead them, my God, to thee. These children there of mine thou gavest, oh, by thy love divine, oh, by thy love divine, lead them, my God, to thee, lead them, my God, to thee, lead them to thee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, um, for this one, I was careful not to ask all the supporters to come because <laughs> Daniel was blessed in this church. That's Daniel Sr. And so perhaps the whole church <laughs> would have come. <laughs> but we're happy to, and by the way, I was told that I'm supposed to be getting free flights on um, <laughs> Delta. <laughs> but it is my joy, and I'm going to again invite my elders to come because this is a, a very precious moment for the church. Um, and I am praying that we will dedicate the next generation as well. So when this little one gets to his father's age, he will also bring back his little ones to be blessed here at Calvary. And because this moment is so precious to the church, I am going to allow all the elders who are here to share one line with the family as we prepare to dedicate this little one. Whatever word the Lord has placed on your heart to give to Donnell, his wife, as they have brought the second child to the Lord, I'm giving you the opportunity so to do. Let's start on my left. Brother Daniel and wife. <laughs> well, they, they have been to me like my own kids. I know they are young, young adults now and um, building a family. So I just, I just want to encourage you that whatever happens, Daniel, just make sure that God is in the middle of your relationship. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just met him in the foyer and I'm um, welcoming him to church, sir. And um, he was saying, yes, I'm happy to be here. And I introduced myself. But not knowing that all of this would be happening, I'm just thankful that God does know how to, to bless. God does know how to have his people together. And so for you, sir, to bring your family in the presence of the great I am yeah. is a testimony that you are saying God take over yeah. and so we are encouraged this morning of the move that you have been making and we just want to say thank you God thank you for showing to the rest of the world that you mean your family to be with God God bless you all Daryl 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 yes it's good to see you back Good to see you back. Good to see you continue to smiling, you know, and to know that you continue to be in, the, in giving the Lord your all. So continue to look to him and continue to raise those children in the fear and under the strength. Amen. Wonderful. Well, in a world where we know what's happening in the classrooms and the different areas of life, so many difficulties children face when they are, especially outside of youth, so the most important part of your um, position in their life is to take them to the altar each morning and evening. So we are admonishing you to be that, um, that lead role in their life as you bring them to God. God bless you. Amen. 
Amen. What can I say? I can say nephew. I can say son. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. That when he goes old, older, he will not depart from it. I see a blessing right now for our heart. Annie, Donovan, to God be the glory. Keep Jesus in front of you. Follow him. Amen. God bless both. Brother Daniel, your home. As you present yourself to the Lord daily, never neglect presenting your family. Because it is as you do so that you will make it into the kingdom. Of heaven. Brother Daniel, I don't know you, but I'm going to stick to the script. Pastor, you said one line, and I say, precious jewels to make up his kingdom. Amen. Yes, Brother Daniel, I can't stick to one line. I know it from when I was a baby. So, <laughs> so, so the, what I want to say is that, you know, you put God first. Um, since we have been at Calvary, your mom and dad has been an inspiration to our family. And we see how he, they grew you up. So in everything that you do, with your wife and your children, put God first. Amen. I'm excited because I'm seeing four generations right here. And I'm just giving God thanks and praise for his doing. I mean, uh, Mother Clark, <laughs> amen, brother and sister Henry, Daniel and your wife, and the precious jewels that you bring to Jesus Christ. Isn't this a blessing? Four generation, praise the Lord. So, Baby Henry, we pray that you will increase in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. Praise him. Thank you so much, elders. So that makes my task much, much simpler. <laughs> I can't outdo all of that. And so I just want to admonish you. And by the way, I'm going to seize this opportunity to say, brethren, that I have been positioned by the Lord to see uh, our members and I've listened and petitioned over many lamentations of our youth who were born in the church and have left the church and it is with that same uh, profundity that I accentuate those who have held on to the hands of the master. We have young men and young women who were born in the church, who are still in the church, holding the bloodstained banner. And for that I say to God be the glory. And maybe we should start talking about those who stay some more. Yeah, because, right, God has been good to us, and we have testimonies, and I want to challenge, it's, it's good, it's, it's beautiful to see that when he told me as we interacted this week in preparation for the dedication, that he was blessed at this church, and with pride, that his first child was also blessed at this church. You know, it meant something to me as a pastor who has had to pray with so many parents and to put in the work to seek to reclaim their children who when they left home and got into their jobs and life nice and everything, they wander from the foundation. And so it gave me great joy that he proudly spoke of his own dedication here, that of his first child, and now he has brought his second child to the Lord. Amen. And I want to challenge you, um, Daniel, and wife. Whatever it is that kept you at the foot of the cross, 
give it to your, ch your children. And I'm saying that because, especially as we consider the uh, our race, often we are so concerned about giving our children what we didn't have growing up that we failed to give them what we had growing up. So we, had a, we have a generation raised with principles and no money, raising a generation with money and no principles. And so I challenge you, whatever kept you at the foot of the cross, do not fail to give it to your children. Because now, more than then, our children need anchorage. You know, and as we study the matter of the great controversy this quarter, we are in the midst of spiritual warfare. Money can't win this. Links can't win this. And the only thing that does is Jesus. And the only safety for our children is in the hands of God. In the hands of God. Let's do the other stanza. Then I'm going to if he will come to me, <laughs> I will take him and do that special prayer. Could you run that for me again? When earth looks bright and fair, fast, dim and gay, let no delusive snare lure them astray. But from temptation's bar, lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them, my God, to thee. Lead them to thee. He won't let his mother go. <laughs> so, would you stand with us and pray? Our Father and our friend, again, your son and your daughter, they have come to celebrate the miracle of childbirth. And oh God, as often as I remind myself I'd like to remind your people that the devil cannot give life and so the successful birth of every child is a miracle what a joy Heavenly Father in a world where so many are losing hope and becoming depressed and feeling loneliness and anguish. The reminder that every human life began with a miracle. Yeah. Is quite a profound reminder. Lord I thank you for the life of young Junior. You have been good to his mother. You have been good to his father. You have been good to him. And so upon his young life today, God, I declare Psalm 144 and verse 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Upon his young life, God, I declare that he can do all things, Philippians 4, 13, through Christ who gives him strength. Upon his life, 
Father, I declare Joshua 1 verse 9. Have not I commanded you, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God will be with you. Into his life I declare God, Jeremiah 1 verse 4. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, and I set you aside for holy use. Upon his life, I declare Matthew 19, 26. With man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Upon his life, Heavenly Father, I declare Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which you have never seen. Upon his life I declare Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, You shall hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will secure young Daniel like a brand plucked from the burning. That over his life the devil will have no iota of control, but that Christ, only Christ, will be honored and exalted. Christ, only Christ, in his life be seen and known and heard. Christ, only Christ, in every look and action. Christ, only Christ, in every thought and word. I ask God that you'll move ahead of us into time and that in his future, you will carve out security and safety. In his future, you will, oh God, set him up ahead and not behind, above and not beneath, as head and not tail. I pray that you will anoint this young vessel, oh God, for sacred and holy and sanctified usage. I pray for his parents, God. I pray that you'll continue to anchor them in the faith. May they model the truth of your word, that he will not need to look beyond home to see how to be like Jesus. May you bless them and protect them and provide for them. I pray blood coverage upon their family in their going out and in their coming in. And I pray, oh God, that generations yet unborn will be anchored in the faith by the lives that they lead here and now. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say amen, amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just want to thank all the members of Calvary for when we were growing up our children to help me and my husband to raise my children. It was beautiful and I just want to thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much, elders. Somebody's glasses fell. I don't know who is. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. All right. In your bulletin, brethren, is printed the names of all our shut in members. And I want to make a special appeal to the church to remember them. And I always say, and I always make it my duty to treat our shut-in members 
as I'd like to be treated when I become a shut-in member. I'd like to get some calls from my church family when I can't come to church anymore. And I'd like to get some visits. Since I've been here, I have had the privilege of visiting with a few of our shut-in members. And some are aging gracefully. Others would do likewise with a little more company. And so I'm admonishing the church to reach out to our shut-in members. The numbers, their cell numbers are also in the bulletin. So if visitation is too much for you, at least give them a ring and say hello and leave a word of prayer with them, even on the phone. Our evangelism weekend started on last evening, and we had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. We were admonished, we were challenged, and there were redemptive rebukes too. But for all of it, we say to God, we the glory. We close tomorrow night right here. We had a good turnout last night, and I want to thank those of you who made it your duty to come into his house last night. And I invite you also to join us on tomorrow night as we bring this weekend effort to a uh, close. Reminding you too that we are returning to in-house Wednesday night prayer meetings beginning this week. And this week, the Family Life Department is going to be leading us into Wednesday night prayer meeting. And so we have a family-oriented prayer meeting. And I'm inviting all of you to join us here at church for Wednesday night prayer meeting. Reminding the church that our evangelistic effort, that of the New England South, of which we are a part, is going to be out in Waterbury beginning the 13th of July, ending the 17th day of August. These doors are going to be closed for the campaign. And so I'm asking every member to put a system in place to be there with us. Soul winning is the business of every blood-bought believer. It is not the responsibility of a select few. Soul winning is the business of every child of God. All right? Uh, today is day of prayer. And before I go there, I just want to remind the church that we are relaunching our church adventure club. We had our Pathfinder Club induction last Sabbath. That was a wonderful experience. But the younger children feel a bit left out. They want to get back into their uniforms too. And so we are relaunching our Adventure Club. And the application forms are going to be available at the door when we are exiting. And as also the Pathfinders will be collecting contributions toward the International Campery that will take place this August in Gillette. Now, I don't know about you, but my church is never left behind. And so our pathfinders will be at International Campery in live and living colors. And we have a very outstanding um, uh, um, marching band. Maybe you haven't really seen what they are capable of doing yet. But they are going to Campari and we are bringing our equipment and we are going to make it obvious that Calvary is there. Hello? Yes. And so 
those of you who are in a position to, as the Pathfinders seek to raise funds to, to that end for campery and in um, collecting contributions at the door, please do show them some love so that they are encouraged. Today, I came in and as usual, I greeted the folk. And when I was walking down the back and minding my own business, somebody said, um, Pastor, <laughs> when I look, I have um, one of my singing evangelists from Jamaica who gave us a surprise visit today. And, uh, and um, of course, you know <laughs> that you will know who that is in a little while. But it's good to have you, Sister Blake. It's good to have you. I don't know how you got here. <laughs> but we're happy that you are here and you are welcome at Calvary. Hello? Praise God. Today is day of prayer. And we're going to be praying. And I've said to you before, Church of God, that nothing lies outside the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. The power of the church is in the prayer of the church. And so a church without prayer is a church without power. If this is a house of God, then when we get here, we should pray until there is more of him and less of us. We should pray until our agenda gives way to his agenda. We should pray until demons get uncomfortable and tremble and flee. We should pray until we receive the spirit and power of the latter rain. And as today we embrace both day of prayer and evangelism weekend, I urge the church to pray as if we have no idea of what God has called us to do, but plan and execute as if we know exactly how, what, when, and where we are to do what God has called us to do. I'm going to do at this time that moment of intercession that we usually have later in the program because that has been amended to facilitate something else. If you're here today, a burden on your heart, and you want us to pray for you, you can press toward the altar as we hold on to the hem of his garment today in prayer. Give me souls in danger, bodies whispered prayers. All right, I'll run with what you have. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. Let's do that one more time. There is a sweet. There is a sweet. A stillness there is a stillness the atmosphere in the atmosphere oh, come lay down the burden oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried the burdens you have carried or in the sanctuary in the sanctuary God is here Somebody sing, he is here. He is here. He is here. To break every yoke. To break and to lift yoke. those heavy burdens. I don't know what burdens you bear, but God is here. Every 
every broken and hopeless heart. To heal the hopeless heart. Bless the broken. Bless the broken. Child of God, won't you come lay down? Come lay down. The burdens you have carried. The burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary. For in the sanctuary. God is here. Just one more time, he is here. He is here. He is here. God he is, is here. So you bring those burdens to Jesus. The, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. He, he is here. God is here. The hopeless heart to heal the hopeless yeah. heart and bless the broken. Would you come lay down the burden? Oh, come lay down, down the your burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. I feel like there is still somebody else who needs to bring some burdens to the altar. He is here. Would you come, child of God? Would you come, child of God? Would you come, child of God? I said the Spirit of God is in this place. Is it sickness? Would you come? Is it depression? Would you come? Is it possession? Would you come? Is it financial problems? Would you come? Would you come, child of God? And bless the have come heavenly father because no matter who we are where we're from where we live where we work how much we earn we all admit that days are filled with sorrow and care that hearts are lonely and drear. But somebody said burdens. Hallelujah. Are lifted at Calvary. And that Jesus is very near. And so your people have all come today. Some out of bondage. Some out of sorrow, some out of black night. But Jesus, we've come to thee. Some have come, God, faced with impossibilities. They've run out of fixing power. The next move, God, is your move. It's a move that nobody else can make. As our faces differ, God, so are our needs. But, oh Lord, oh, how rewarding to know that while you have upwards of 8 billion people on the face of the earth, you know each voice. 
You know each face. You know each need. In fact, God, you know more than that. For the word says you know every strand of hair on our heads by name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That means, God, you know detail about us we don't know about ourselves. Oh, God, sometimes we comb in our hair and when we look in the, between the teeth of the comb, we see hairs falling out. And for us, it's just a strand of hair that we sweep out of our comb and perhaps roll together and dispose of. But God, your word says that when we look between the teeth of our combs, that you can call each strand of here by name. What a God! You care about the simple detail of our being. Oh, how rewarding God to know that no problem we have is so small that you are annoyed. And none is so big that you have to scratch your head and wonder what move to make. Oh God, sometimes when we consider this reality, the words of the song come home ever so profoundly. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear simply because we refuse to carry the little problems and the big problems everything to God in prayer and so today God Calvary has bowed our hearts below, below our knees and we have taken our burdens to the cross and we are leaving them here mighty God we're saying take control Jesus of our marriages take control of our children who've wandered from the fold take control of our children still in the fold but it seems by all indication that they have every plan to leave God come by here for those who are trying to remain faithful but they're becoming disillusioned and wavered and wearied and tired Lord come by here for those bodies at the altar that ache in pain mighty God come by here for those of oh God faced with financial embarrassment you who turned the belly of the fish into an ATM machine when your people needed to pay their bills Jehovah Jireh come by here someone here needs help mighty God and we can't do much but there is power in prayer and so we ask you God come by here somebody's here depressed great counselor divine comforter come by here somebody is here God in mourning and bereavement come by here we have members who are absent today because they are out to bury loved ones we have members who will be absent next weekend for they'll be traveling to bury loved ones. Mighty one of Israel, come by here. Arise, God of glory, with healing in your wings. Vindicate your character. Deliver your children. Humiliate the devil. Crush the head of the serpent. One more time, mighty God, and give your people victories that will be translated into testimonies of your goodness. God, we give you thanks in advance for you are God all by yourself. You are God and there's nothing you cannot do. You are God and there's nothing and no one that can outdo you. And so having submitted our petitions to you, we give you prepaid praise. For you said before you call Calvary, I will answer. While you are speaking, I am hearing. God, remember Elder Ray Sharp, who is not here 
because of sickness. God, I pray that you will touch her even now. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Everybody else who is not feeling well, but drag themselves to your house this morning. May you reward them, mighty God, with deliverance, with ease, with breakthrough. Is our prayer, mighty God. Break a fresh jar of olive in this atmosphere. Wash us from the pulpit to the pew. Consecrate us. Anoint us. And empower this church. We beg you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm just going to invite our elders, our elders quickly to come. We have a presentation to do. Uh, our pastor, you hear him earlier in his pastor's corner, uh, bigging up persons who have celebrated their birthday. He too have celebrated his birthday on the 4th. And so the elders of this church, who did I say? The elders body, the elders board of this church have sought it fit to recognize our pastor and um, Ella Lorraine is right here and I'll just hand over to her and you will do the rest, Ella Lorraine. Okay. Where is pastor? Pastor Hamilton? To date, right? It's 42 days since your installation. And on the 40th day, you have celebrated your birthday. So, we the board of elders prayed for you like Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10. Please, Lord, bless Lambert Lara Hamilton. Bless him indeed and give him more territory beyond Bridgeport, the every nooks and cranny of the entire world that the gospel may go forth with power. We beg your Lord to stay your hands on him. We pray that the Holy Spirit will live in him and we pray that Satan will not allow him to have pain. So, pastor, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we pray that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will turn his face towards you and give you peace, not just today, but forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.
is on Sabbath, Calvary. And as Pastor said, today is the day of prayer and fasting for the house of God. And we are going to be praying at this time, especially for transformation. Let me see the hands of all those who would like to be transformed. You would like the spirit of the living God to live in you so that you can fight against the wiles of the enemy, so that your life will be transformed wherever you go. The spirit of the living God will live and move in and through you. In your home, your home will be transformed. Farm, your workplace, wherever you go because God lives in you. If that is the desire of your heart today, I am going to ask you to stand because we believe in God and there's absolutely nothing God cannot do. And God said that he come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And Matthew 18, 18 to 20 says, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven he says truly i tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three gather in my name there i am with you 260 over who are me Holy Spirit.
next to you and you are going to pray for the person next to you and we are praying for the transformation we are praying for the Holy Spirit of God to live in us to empower us our desire is to be like Jesus our desire is to show forth who Christ is we don't want to show a distorted view of who Christ is our desire is to turn Bridgeport and its environs upside down down, including Trumbull Avenue. We have been here a long time and it's time for Bridgeport to know that the power of the living God reign and God is God Almighty. So I'm going to ask you to pray for each other, the person hand who you hold, that the Holy Spirit will infill us and then I will pray. Oh, for that flame of living fire, which shone so bright in saints of old, which bade their souls to heaven aspire, come in distress, in danger bowl. Where is that spirit, Lord, which dwelt in Abram's breast and sealed him thine, which made Paul's heart with sorrow melt and glow with energy divine? That spirit, Lord, which from age to age proclaimed thy love and taught thy ways, brightened Isaiah's vivid page and breathed in David's hallowed lays. Is not thy grace as mighty now as when Elijah felt his power, when glory beamed from Moses' brow, or Job endured a trying hour? Remember, Lord, remember the ancient of days. Renew thy word, thy grace restore. And while to thee our heart be raised, and us Lord, your Holy Spirit pour. Oh God, this is a prayer for our heart today. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You are the creator who spake and it was done who command and it stood fast and you're still maintaining that word today and you don't have to say again let there be hallelujah this is the God that we are coming to Lord we know we are not worthy but we are coming in the worthiness of Jesus Christ who says we must come to you all ye who labor and every labor then and I will give you rest. You invite us to take your yoke. So Father we lay our 
burden at our feet. Lord, we know that we are wretched. We have done wrong. We have dishonored you. We have discredited you. We have spoken unadvisable with our lips. Lord, we take your name in vain because we said we are Christian and oftentimes, Lord, you, Jesus Christ, is not be seen or be heard in us. But today, Jesus, we come to you. We don't want that status anymore. We don't want that state anymore. We want you, Jesus, to come in our hearts. We want you to transform us. We want you to live out your life within us. Oh, Jesus, King of kings, be thou thyself the answer to all our questionings. Oh, God, you tell us, says, is not by might, nor by power, but is by your spirit. So we are praying for the Holy Spirit indwelling. We are praying for the Holy Spirit cleansing. We are praying, Lord, for the Holy Spirit renewal. We are praying, Lord, for the Holy Spirit transformation. We are praying, Lord, for the Holy Spirit wisdom. We are praying, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to live and reign supreme in our lives. Father, we beg you that you will be the priority in our lives. Lord, not our job, not our family. You, God, because when you lead, guide, and direct, is there any limit to what you will not do in us? So, Father, we commit and commend our lives in your hand. And we beg you and we thank you, Lord, because we ask you, because you said, Lord, Lord, ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. You said if we who are parent, I'm a parent, Lord. I want to give my children good gifts. But you say we are evil. We don't even know. But you, God, will give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the infilling. Thank you, Lord, for staying your hands on us. Thank you, Lord, for opening up our ears so we can hear you. Thank you, Lord, for removing the scales from our eyes so that we can see you. Thank you, Lord, for baptizing us and you baptize every cell in our body. Every cell, Lord, baptize and massage it with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Dearest Jesus, there are some here who don't know you yet. They might be here because of curiosity. We don't know Jesus, but we beg your Holy Spirit. I pray thee that you may reveal and manifest yourself to them. I pray thee, Lord, that you may interpret your words to their heart today. I beg you, Lord, that we all will heal our will and our way to you. Lord, we beg you, we beg you. I as your man servant, Lord, prepare to present the word, the word that you have given him. Father, we don't want to see Pastor De Marley. We don't even want to hear him. Lord, we want you, Jesus, to speak through him to our hearts and that we will receive your word. I beg you, Lord, that the demons of darkness that is lurking around in this congregation and online, whichever of the platform, be it YouTube or Facebook, take your flight to hell, Satan. The blood of Jesus is against you. God reigns supreme. And God, you are in control. And Father, we are prisoner of you. We stay with you because with you we have the victory again and again. Remember Pastor Lambert Hamilton, the shepherd of the flock. Jesus, you are the mighty shepherd, but he is the under shepherd and he takes his direction from you. So Father, I beg you in the name of Jesus that you may wrap 
him up. Tie him up, Jesus, and tangle him up in you. Father, I beg you that you may keep your eyes on him as he keep his eyes on you. I pray thee, Lord, that you may give him your wisdom from an eye, that when he speak, he will speak with authority because he's speaking the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Calvary is not the same again. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. We pray thee, Lord. We beg you, Jesus, to rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Calvary. It's a privilege and an honor to stand here this morning mm -hmm. to bless the offering and to ask of God. King David did not get the chance to build the house of God, but his son got the chance. But in it too, God used him to deliver the thanksgiving and praise. First Chronicle 29, 1 to 13 said, Yours, O Lord, is the greatest and the power and the glory and majesty and splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Your, 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 you, O Lord, is the kingdom and you exalt above all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler over all. Your hands are strong and powerful. Excellent art thou, O God, in everything. Now, our God, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we glorify your name through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
bring in the tithe and offering. Let us give thanks, gracious and eternal Father and our God, from you all blessings flow. Father, this hour we want to give you thanks for the tithes and offering that was collected. Dear Father, you say all, the earth, all things on earth belongs to thine. A cattle on a thousand hills and the wild bees, the wild birds, every living thing belongs to you. So Father, as we give back to you, we ask, O oh God, that your Whatever we give, we'll give with honor within our heart, knowing that you deserve. So may it be used to build up your kingdom and to glorify your holy name as we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We are still praying, church. And so as you look in your bulletin, you'll see that we have this session to come up. And so I'm going to invite the church again to stand as we are still um, allowing the Holy Spirit to parade upon our territory. Stand, the church. We are asking the church to stand. And I'm going to ask as you hold hands together, as you continue to hold hands together, that God will hold your heart together, so that every member, what did I say? Every member that the Holy Spirit will prick your heart that each member has a responsibility to win soul for Christ. Amen? And so we are going to just continue in prayer. You have two minutes to pray that God will breathe his breath upon you so that you can understand the seriousness the responsibility of all to, to seek, to point persons to God so that they too can become excited. They too can become impressed and to serve God through to eternity. You are going to be praying for two minutes and to give for God to give you that tactfulness so that you can win soul and be off of Jesus. As this praise team, praise team continues singing.
just praying for two minutes. Hold hands together. You are praying that he, the Holy Spirit, will continue to parade in your mind of the responsibility that all of us need to have for winning souls for the kingdom. It's a responsibility that we do have. And for, us, for him to give us the tactfulness so that we can be true representative for her God. Gracious God and our Father in heaven, it's to you that we come again this morning, recognizing grace and mercies that we did not deserve. But our God, the loving God that you are, the God who is full of glory and praise. The, love, the loving God who continues to demonstrate his love upon his creation. It's to him that we come once more, giving our all in all unto thee. So we pray even now, as we continue in prayer, that he, the Holy Spirit, Lord, will have full control of our mind. It is still a mystery what has happened in heaven, but God will be there to bring hope unto us when you allow your only son to die at Calvary. It brings hope to our lives that God, because you love us unconditionally, because you love us with an everlasting love, Lord, you gave all to redeem us unto thee. So we come unto thee this morning recognizing the true love that has followers of thee that no more, Lord, will we look to the trick of the enemy, but we will be resolute. We will stand firm. We will stand at ease and understand your power and your glory. So Lord, we give all to thee. We pray earnestly this morning that as our, as our mind become, become consumed of whom thou art, that the devil will not have a say. We know, Lord, that the hell is as open wide its mouth. But Jesus, you have made it possible that we don't have to go to hell. It's as open because wide we have mouth. life that we can choose to go into But eternity. Jesus, you have so made God, it possible that yes, we don't have to go to hell. It's as open wide its mouth. We have life that we can choose to yes, go into eternity. But Jesus, you have made it God. possible. That Lord, we don't have to go to hell. So as hope and why we have life that we can choose to go into hell. Jesus, you have made it possible. That Lord, we don't have to go to hell. So as hope and why we have life that we can choose to go into hell. Jesus, you have made it possible. That Lord, we don't have to go to hell. So as hope and why we have life that we can choose to go into hell. Jesus, you have made it possible. That Lord, we don't have to go to hell. So as hope and why. Your mighty hand took up full control. Help us, Lord. We know that there is a battle that is raging. We know that there is a controversy that is happening. But Lord, our mind become easy because of what you would have done at Calvary. So help us, Lord, that as a people this morning, 
as a, as a congregation this morning, this congregation will never be the same because we will see the responsibility that all of us do have to go out and to share Jesus with our fellow men. We will see the responsibility that we do have to go out and encourage someone. We will see the responsibility that we have that is not only in church, but Jesus, when we are at our workplaces, persons must know that there is a Christian gentleman. There is a lady who is standing up for principle. And how often, Lord, as we walk out of the doors of your sanctuary, we have the enemy to come upon board. But Jesus, in the name of Jesus this morning, we come into our life once more to thee. Take full control and lead us, O God, King Emmanuel. We are thankful, Lord, for the leadership of this church. We are thankful for her pastor, Pastor Lambert Hamilton, of the insight that you have given to him. And we pray, God, that as we listen, that we will listen to the voice of Jesus speaking to our hearts. Let's not become rebellious, Lord, but let us understand that you want us. You have laid the way for us to go into eternity. But God, how often we become distracted. So, Lord, this again is another opportunity to hold on to your unchanging hands. I pray, God, that every member, every visitor, everyone who is looking online, who is listening to the voice of my interceding on their behalf this morning, that, Jesus, they will look to thee from whence come their help. Their help only come from Jesus. Lord, help us to this end. I want to pray in a special way for the sick among us those who are not able to come out as we, they would like to. We know that is the plan of the enemy. But we are thankful, Lord, that you have given them up a mind. A mind that if they allow it to be on Jesus, then all will be well and done by thee. Lord, for those who were not able to come out into the sanctuary this morning, they too, I pray the same blessing upon their lives. Lord, may we, may this church never be the same. But Lord, we will see that each and every one of us has a responsibility to hold up the, 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 the mantle of Prince Emmanuel. We will know, Jesus, that we have been with thee and we have absolutely nothing to fear. Thank you, Lord, for the remainder of this service. Thank you that you would have, as you would have spoken to our pastor who will be taking full control that Jesus, the all he needs to do now is just to open his mouth and to let Jesus speak. Thank you, Lord, for what you continue to do in this circle. And thank you for being our God is our prayer that we ask in thee only, for we ask it all in no other name, but in the sweet and matchless name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. come to that point of worship where we will hear the word of God. To those who were here last night, the speaker needs no introduction. But I will introduce him to those who were not here last night 
He's native of St. Thomas, Jamaica. Holds membership in the Danvers Pen Seventh day Adventist Church, a little church out in the countryside. I've had the joy of worshiping with them <laughs> there before. <laughs> He's a graduate of Northern Caribbean University where he was trained in the gospel ministry. And so he holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in religion and theology. He completed a Master of Arts degree in educational administration at the same institution. He currently pursues a Master's of Public Policy analysis with emphasis on educational policies at the College of New Jersey. He is a preacher of righteousness. He's also a music minister. He loves the teaching and preaching ministry. And he will tell you he does this much study in education because God has called him to twin the preaching and teaching ministries together. That's the brand of ministry to which he feels compelled by God. I will not use the time for him to tell you about God, to tell you about him. He is God's servant with God's message for God's people. This is God's house. Today is God's day. Before Pastor DeMarley Williams presents to us that which the Lord has downloaded into his spirit for his people. The praise team has obliged me, and I will, Sister Suzette Blake will do our meditation song. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm happy to be worshiping with you today. All right, we're waiting on the track. Okay, so every team is... They do have the track. I know it's set. So. All right. Captive, 
to sorrow and pain Years of frustration has love passed me by Until the master heard my heart cry for grace Marvelous grace I needed grace To pardon and make me whole Grace Marvelous grace Flows from above Within Broken inside, praying for mercy with nowhere to hide. There was a soulless searching for me. Grace ever flowing, and it sets my soul. To pardon and to make me whole grace, marvelous grace flows from above with infinite love, marvelous grace. I am. Say praise the Lord and grace, marvelous grace flows from above with infinite love, marvelous grace. Marvelous grace, marvelous grace. Are you happy for the grace of God? If you're thankful for the grace of God, let me hear you say praise the Lord. If you're happy for that grace, let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, for he has given us grace. She was waiting on the track. And uh, she turned to pastor and she said, <laughs> you need to come and say something before I drop down up here. <laughs> and that doesn't sound like someone who wanted to fall to me. 
unless she will be falling in grace. Has God been good to you? God has truly been good to us. And let me tell you something, I enjoy worshiping online with you guys, but I realize that it's much better in the temple. I said it's much better in the temple. I, I, I cannot hear the musicians so well online. And I cannot hear when someone is shouting glory. I, I can hear and I can experience it when I'm in the temple. And so I am happy to be here once more. Amen. Amen. I want to thank your pastor, my friend, Pastor Hamilton, for giving me the opportunity to be here. I also want to greet his lovely wife, who is here with him. And I have had the, uh, I don't know if you'd say unfortunate or fortunate opportunity to know him before her. And I can tell you that he's better now. <laughs> and so, Sister Hamilton, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. There are some family members online and some friends who I want to uh, say happy Sabbath to. In particular, Sister Molly Martin, because somebody <laughs> had forgotten to mention her at his installation. And so to his or mine, I want to say happy Sabbath to you, Sister Martin. She joins Calvary every Sabbath. You're not hearing me. Every Sabbath morning, she calls me to send her the link for Calvary. And little did she know that she can use the same link every Sabbath. <laughs> but farther along, farther along. <laughs> and so she's here with us. She is a music minister. And in due season, you will get to meet her. Because when your friends are at Calvary, when your friends are at Calvary, they have to take you with them. <laughs> Amen. I also want to mention that um, uh, there is a particular student who messaged me last night and he said, Sir, I want you, when you're preaching today, to big me up. <laughs> so I want to say, big up yourself, Chris J. <laughs> and he said this morning, I should tell the congregation that, I, uh, uh, that he is my only student who is online watching. <laughs> but I, I, I ask you to pray for him because his desire, he says, is to one day become a pastor. Amen. And it is truly a good thing when young people want to spread the word of God. Pray for him. Because there are challenges that he goes through, but he is still a person, according to his mother, who watches church every Sabbath, every day. And so he is someone who is interested in the word, Pastor. I also want to let you know that uh, there are a couple of times I had to take knives from him when I was dean of discipline. <laughs> And um, a few other things that he got mixed up in, but he was always preaching the word. Amen? In some way or in some fashion. And so pray for him so that one day, someday soon, he will be here preaching the word. God is truly a good God, and I am happy to say last night wasn't my last night. And because of that, I am here through many dangers toils and snares i have already come i am here to worship god in spirit and in truth are you ready to worship are you ready to worship calvary come on you 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 have to answer me now you know because you took your time <laughs> you took your time and um i'm not gonna take my time but <laughs> you know <laughs> I want you to worship him in spirit and in truth. I also want to say to you, my sister down there, happy Sabbath from NCU. And I am not going to identify her because she knew us when we were called but not yet saved. <laughs> so I don't want you to ask her some of the things we carried on with in seminary. But God bless you, my sister. 
It's happy to see you here in the presence of God. If you will, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I was on the train yesterday and I was listening to music, minding my own business, reading also. I was listening to a song and I got a little bit overjoyed and I was there humming and because the hair phone was in my ear, the earpiece was inside. So I did not, thank you very much, I did not, I, I was not cognizant of the fact that I, persons around me could hear. So there was this one woman beside me and she said, you can sing well. <laughs> and I love music. Keep on singing for the Lord. And that's a beautiful thing. And let me tell you why particularly. There are persons in other parts of the world who believe that Americans are ungodly. You're not hearing me. There are persons in different parts of the world who believe that there are people in America that don't care about God. And for a stranger, as a matter of fact, I, 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 and, and she never had her glasses on and she was on her tablet and so she had to zoom things up. So I wasn't prying. I wasn't prying, I promise you. But I realized that she was reading her Bible. There are people who still need the Lord. And so I was singing, For it reaches the highest mountain. Oh, you know that one too? In flow to the Lord, lowest valley. blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power said the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary oh the blood that gives me strength oh from day to day it will never it will never lose its power won't you help me sing, Calvary? Oh, it reaches in the high, highest mountain. Thank you, Jesus. And to the Lord, Lord. Oh, yeah, the blood that gives me strength. I hear them say, it soothes my and calm my yeah, it dries it dries all my tears yeah, the blood that gives me strength said day That gives me all from day to day. It will never, it will never lose. It will, it will never, 
age. Come on, worship your God in this place. Oh, it reaches to the high, highest mountain. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, and flows to the Lord, the lowest church in the blood that gives me strength from a day to day it will never 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 lose it will never it will never lose We bless your name, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Will you stand to your feet with your Bibles in hand and turn to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10. You see, I prefer when other people preach and I sing pastor. <laughs> As if you were here, then I'll be down there doing what you're doing. But in the meantime, in between time, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. Romans chapter 10, 14 and 15 reads, How then shall they call on him whom they have not yet believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Who brings what? Glad tidings of? Of good things. Who brings glad tidings of good things. I speak to you on the subject today. Look at me now. Look at me now. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. And now I ask that as I speak to your people, they will see you and not me. Hear you and not me. And more importantly, accept you and not me. In Jesus' name I pray. On your way to your seat, tell your neighbor, look at me now. Look at me now. Tell your neighbor, look at me now. I, I, don't look too long now. <laughs> don't look too long now. Just, just look at me now. Because some of you are not sitting beside your wives and your husbands. So be careful, be careful. Be careful. Romans chapter 10 is an interesting, as as a matter of fact, the book of Romans is an interesting book in the New Testament. For it is in this book that Paul emphasizes that we are not justified by the law, rather Our justification comes by our faith in Jesus Christ. For in addition to the law, there must exist another element. Specifically, our faith in Jesus Christ. Paul believes that Jesus the Christ is the fulfillment of the Mosaic law. And so Romans chapter 10 verse 1 to 11 shows a clear distinction between righteousness by law and righteousness by faith. And so the book of Romans is known to show Paul as a great proponent of the theology which suggests that we gain righteousness through faith. I want you to understand, beloved friends, that Paul understood that every bit of our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. It is not through our ability to preach. It is not through our ability to teach. Not because we are able to pray and not because we are able to follow the laws of the Bible while we are justified. It is because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Paul set out on a mission to convince the Jews in Romans 
uh, that they are they have every reason to believe in Jesus Christ he also wanted to alight pastor how foolish and sinful it was to reject Jesus Christ and the sacrifice for them and so in this book Romans uh, chapter 10 Paul had a few contentions with the church of Rome and so he wrote to them and I want to share with you just four of the contentions that he was that he was having and then take my seat the first contention is that Paul recognized that the people there in the church, they were operating with zeal and no knowledge. You're not hearing me. <laughs> the contention Paul was having was that the folks around him, they were zealous, but they lacked knowledge. And this is a serious problem because you will note that Paul begins his discourse by expressing his heartfelt desire and prayer to God for the salvation of the Israelites. But then he went on to acknowledge that his fellow Jews have a zeal of God, but he criticizes that zeal because it lacks knowledge. It's a dangerous thing <laughs> to have zeal and have no knowledge. You're not hearing me, Calvary. It's a dangerous thing to what? Have zeal and? And so Paul recognized this as a contention with his people because they were passionate about everything that they were doing, but they failed to understand the true path to righteousness. They seek to establish their own righteousness through the law rather than embracing the righteousness that comes through Jesus, by faith through Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that the people there were not, they, 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 they were doing the work, they were doing what they were supposed to do, but only people who lived up to the law were able, were considered people who were going to heaven. And I want, to, I want you to pay keen attention to what Paul was going through and the contention that Paul had because this, sound like the same prob this sounds like the same problem we're having in the modern church today. We have, we have a church populated by people who are zealous for the work, who are zealous about the law, but we still lack knowledge. Paul made it very clear uh, he said, listen, I know what it is like. I have been there and I've experienced it. I've lived through it. I have worked for the law. I have worked in the name of God. And I was doing all of this without knowledge. And this is the thing I love about Paul and in the Pauline epistles. He lays himself bare and vulnerable before the believers because he wants them to understand what he is suggesting to them. He's not trying to play bigger than them, Pastor. See him, Paul, in Romans 7, verse 15, said that I don't understand what is wrong with me because the things I don't want to do, those are the things I do. And the things I must do, those are the things I'm not doing. I don't know what's happening. It's the same Paul that comes here and tell the people that I have been there with you. I know what it is like to be operating on zeal and zeal only. The reality, beloved friends, is that Paul understood what it was like to preach on doctrines that he did not believe in. Paul understood what it was like to be teaching Sabbath school entirely from what the quarterly says and not consulting the Bible. Paul understood what it felt like to be reciting things that he heard the pastor suggested, but did not stop to check it out for himself. I don't know if you're catching it, um, Calvary, but I'm not talking about Paul. I'm talking about the modern church because some of us here are operating on zeal and zeal only. Something is wrong with the contemporary church because the reality is that without knowledge, we speak foolishness. 
the sad truth is that it uh, and I'm telling you it's good to be passionate about the word it's good to be zealous about what you're doing but you must know where that zeal is coming from I want to tell you because we are seventh day Adventists and we are people who believe that we have the truth and we must share the truth but share it in love too many of us who are zealous about what we do and zealous about what we say and we criticize other people for how they worship because we believe that coming to church and folding our arms and listen to the speaker and smile with him and shake our head is worship. You can do that at home. You, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to come here to criticize the preacher. You don't have to come here to, to I'm not talking about Calvary now. You, 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 know? uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to leave your homes to come here and just sit and do nothing. Criticize people for what, they're we for, for what they're wearing. Criticize people for what they're saying. Criticize people for how loudly they, for, for how loud they worship. Listen to me, Calvary. I don't have a problem with people's praise. I have a problem with their theology. And it makes a difference. Because when you understand the doctrines of the church and you understand people's theology, then you can decide whether you want to support them or not support them. Too many Seventh-day Adventists who do not know what the Seventh-day Adventist church believes in. And there are people on the outside who are not becoming Seventh-day Adventists. Not because of what the church preaches and teaches. Or not because of what the Bible teaches and preaches. But because of what people within the Seventh-day Adventists have to say. Spend our time packing hell, pastor. Telling who can and cannot go to heaven. As if we don't read the Bible that suggests that we ought not to judge. Leave all judgments to God. Because you judge everybody except yourself. Stop operating without knowledge. Because, beloved friends, I'm suggesting to, and if I should put it in mathematical terms, Pastor, zeal minus knowledge equals arrogance. You're preaching and teaching the word. You ought to preach and teach the word in love. And then maybe others will listen to you and hear what you have to say. So, so, so that's the first contention. The second contention is this. He was having problem with, with, the, with the church because they believed too much in the law and not in, right, in, in, in faith. So Paul proposed the, the gospel in the gospels, in, the, in, in his writings, that we get our salvation through Jesus Christ. But I believe, Pastor, that Paul foresaw what would happen in future. Because he realized that if we were to base our salvation on the law, only some people would be here every Sabbath. Only some people would be preaching every Sabbath. Only some people would be teaching every Sabbath. Because everybody is trying to score points. <laughs> Can I preach? Everybody would be trying to be on the right side of the law. And trying to be on the right side of the law or in front of the law will really means that you're putting people on the other side. And you're putting people at the back side. Because you want to be front and center in everything. And so Paul said this is not how it works. Because Jesus the Christ is a fulfillment of the laws that you're preaching and you're teaching. And I want you to understand that you do not get your salvation unless it is through Jesus Christ. It makes more sense brothers and sisters because if it were not through faith, if it was not righteousness by faith, then we would have more chaos in church than we have now. There is nothing you can do of yourselves to appease God. It's only because of Jesus Christ who was wounded for our transgression. 
bruised for our iniquities. Why some of us are able to stand here. And I do not know where we get the notion. And I'm talking to people who are unsaved now. I do not know where you got the notion that you ought to fix yourself up first before you come to Jesus Christ. If we were all waiting on that pastor, then the lines on the outside of the church would be long and there would be no one on the inside. Because all of us have things to work out. And you are depending on your own selves to stop smoking. It won't work. If you're depending on yourselves to not be alcoholics, it will not work. But I know, I know, I know why they feel that way. Because church people have the tendency of judging everybody. Now you want to know how I know that? Uh, some of us come to church dignified. And if pastor calls for a testimony, no one wants to speak. No one wants to testify. I, 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 and tomorrow I'll talk more about that. But let me tell you why. They don't want to testify. There are some people who don't want everybody in their business. <laughs> and then there are other people who don't want to be judged. And so here is how we testify, Pastor. We testify by saying six years ago. I, I, listen, it's the Sabbath, you know. So I have to tell the truth. Don't it? T ten years ago, I was in the dance hall. Hey, Jamaicans know the dance hall. And, you know, if you're not from Jamaica, you know the clubs or whatever you call it. Uh, and, and, and then I heard a voice saying, whatever, whatever. We're not testifying about things we did last night. Church would be upside down. Huh? We're not testifying about the things that happened uh, the day before yesterday. And uh, un unless, we, unless we look good, Pastor, in the testimony. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't testify about the things that really troubles us. And that is why people on the outside believe that they need to be perfect before they come inside. And the reason you're afraid to testify about your vulnerab vulnerabilities is because if someone comes here and testify about something they did recently, you start to judge them. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can just bet that this was the challenge uh, Robert, Ro Robert Lowry was having when he penned to him, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He said, oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The church needs to understand that. And the sooner we understand that, it's the better we, it, it'll be for us. Be, 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 because we get our righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ and not by the law. The contention Paul was having was that only the affluent and the influential people, the affluent people and the influential people would be in church every day. I told you last night that church is not a place for superstars, it's a place for rising stars. So don't come here and behave as if you're on, a, on the world stage. This is not the place for it. This is not the, the place for it. And so Paul extends the notion to the Christian community of Rome. He submits in the verse from, ver, from, verses, from verse 5 to 8. He said, do not think you have to ascend in heaven or descend in the abyss to gain salvation. Paul said, Try, stop, 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 stop trying to out preach the preacher. Yeah? <laughs> stop trying to outdo the pastor. Stop trying to upstage your fellow elders. Stop trying to stress and depress the young people. Stop trying to oppress and silence the little children. You will not earn flight credits to heaven. There is nothing to gain from pretending that you are better at keeping the law than your brothers or sisters. Stop it. 
because it makes the church chaotic. And so Paul declares that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then he shall be saved. And that's Bible. And so Paul had a contention with righteousness by faith. But here's the third thing. Here's the third contention he had. Paul's contention, Pastor, was that the people there did not understood the universality of the gospel. Despite how some of us act and react in church, the gospel is universal. You're not hearing me. I, and, and I'm talking uh, particularly to people in modern era who uses Christianity to divide people in society. I, I, am, am, I, am I preaching Calvary? I'm talking to people who uses God's word to do crazy things in society. And I want you to understand, I don't care who you are, and I don't care where you're from. I, I, there, I, I don't care whichever movement you're a part of within Christianity, who believes that one color is superior over the other. Whether you're black or you're white, I want you to understand that the gospel is universal. The gospel does not favor a particular color or kind or creed. It serves every race, every gender, every culture, and every status quo. I don't care whichever party you support. I want you to know that the gospel is for the red as if the gospel is for the blue. Stop trying to use the gospel and God's word to segregate and to dehumanize people. It is unbiblical and it is ungodly. And I'm telling you because you are entering into an evangelistic series very soon and you need to be prepared. And I don't know what is wrong with modern theology pastor. I think modern theologists are just bored. Because they get up every day and they find the simplest of things to, to get distracted by. We, 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 we today, we measure in the minor too much. Yeah? Trying to figure out whether Jesus is or was, sorry, black or white. And you can call me arrogant. You can call me ignorant even. But I don't care what color he was. I don't care about the man's color. I care about his character. I, I, I want you to understand that when we step into the presence of God, it ought to be different. The reality is that we have church that serves white people and churches that serves black people. And if we understood the gospel, we would have cut it out long time ago. I don't care who you are and I don't care where you're from. The gospel is equally for the white as the gospel is for the black. The gospel is universal. And stop trying to twist God's word. Because he could be white, he could be black. I don't care, it could be pink even. He still died on Calvary's cross. For my sins and yours. Stop measuring in the minor. We are too distracted these days, beloved friends. By too many interest groups. Who, who hold too much sway over the church. And they want to tell you how to preach. They want to tell you what to preach and they want to tell you what to believe in. I'm so happy that I'm Jamaican, so I'm not trying to be politically correct. I want you to know that I'm still a Bible believing Christian and Bible does not see color. Bible does not see creed. Bible only see human beings. And so Paul, so Paul says in, in verse 10, 10 to 13 he said for it it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is your it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved as scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame for there is no difference between Jew 
and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. I said that was Paul's contention back then in the church. And that is my contention today in the church. You see the problem we're having pastor is that church people are too territorial. And we do it. We do it subliminally. So, so, so sometimes you miss it. But church people are too territorial. Uh, we don't say things out loud, but our actions suggest it. Hello. And if you don't believe me, I told you last night when when new believers come in church, we celebrate them for the first month or two or three, and then after that, we just carefully shrug them to the side. So that we can continue with the program as per usual. I'm talking about the Seventh-day Adventist church now. Because I was Baptist, but I was Baptist when I was young. I, hello? I was Baptist when I was young. The only church I am for, I, I affiliated with for, 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 for a good while now is the Seventh-day Adventist church. I'm not going to do like some people and talk about people church that I don't know. I know this church and I'm suggesting to you beloved friends that we need to stop being territorial. And so the unwritten law of who sits where. Oh, that don't happen here in Calvary. Can't happen here in Calvary. Can't happen here in Calvary. But there are still some churches where everybody, everybody, sister, everybody knows that this is Sister Pam's seat, Pastor. And Sister Pam doesn't have a disability, you know. She just wants to be here every Sabbath. And if she can't get to sit here, she prefers sit in the overflow. You're not hearing me? I don't know if it's the lighting is better on one side, Pastor. <laughs> or the Holy Spirit is over on one side more and less on another. But there are some people who mark seats in church and visitors will come and we will never get up <laughs> to give them the seat. I, I wonder if I'm preaching. Because we believe that we have a mark on a certain spot in church. Cut it out. You can't want God's mercies if you're territorial. You can't expect to go to heaven if you're territorial. You need to know that the church belongs to God. I told you last night and I'm going to tell you again that when people come to church and, 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 and I'm telling you again because some of you weren't here last night and I don't know if you watched last night's preaching so I want to tell you again that when people come to church you ought to use them to bring glory to God. And stop pushing people one side. Yeah? Pastor, when they come, we tell them that you can't be deaconess yet because you don't know the ins and outs of the church. You don't know which key opens which door. And, 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 hey, so, so you can't be deaconess yet. You have to learn how to, to get things together. And you can't be elder because you have to be in the church for an extended period of time. And you have to know this and you have to know that. And you can't be on the treasury team because we don't want you to go outside and talk the church finances. And you can't preach yet because you don't know the doctrines. And you can't this and you can't that. We ought to understand that the word of God is important. Not just to some, but to every single body. Everyone needs to be a part of the gospel ministry. And the, uni and, and the gospel is universal. And I'm telling you all of this because I believe that the church today is way too divided. Is way too divided. But, but here is the, here is the, here's the thing. Paul realized that the church back then was preaching an exclusive gospel. 
The gospel included some people and excluded others. You're not hearing me? The gospel included some people and excluded some. And so Paul felt the need to say to them, listen, I want you to understand that there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same God for the rich is the same God for the poor. The same God for the whites, the same God for the blacks. There is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. The gospel that is for the Jews is the gospel that is for the Gentiles. The same God that is generous to you is the same God that is generous to each and everyone else. I know some of you know Bob Marley and <laughs> Bob Marley said that when the rain falls, it don't fall on one man's house stop. Which means that God it, it does not, I, I don't know if he was talking about God. But anyways, <laughs> I want you to know that God does not specify who gets rain and who gets sunshine. In a particular lo locale, he, he blesses everybody equally. And when it's your time to shine, it will be your time to shine. And when God is going to bless you, he's going to bless you. Stop trying to, stop trying to think that if somebody else is blessed, then you can't be blessed. The gospel is universal. And so I'm just going to say one last thing on this matter. And then I move on to the final point. I want to say to white preachers, stop preaching against black preachers. And black preachers, stop preaching against white pe preachers. The pulpit is not supposed to be used for any particular interests or advantages. There's this little song they used to sing in church when I was when I was going. You, you, you have to you got to love everybody if you wanna see Jesus. You know it. You got to love everybody if you wanna see God. You got to mind the ways of. You got to treat all men as. You got to love everybody if you wanna see. You better know that. You better know that. And so Paul had a contention. Number one was he despised the fact that people had zeal and no knowledge. Contention number two is that people were too, uh, were too focused on the law. And so they didn't realize that their righteousness comes through faith. And the third thing is he recognized the universality of the gospel. But here's the fourth and final contention. Paul realized. That it was necessary to preach the word. You're not hearing me? You can't, I, I, I said, Paul recognized that they need to be preaching the word. And so in verse 14 to 15, he said, How then can they tell, can they call on one who they do not believe in? And how can they believe if they do not hear? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can the preacher preach unless he be sent? Paul was questioning anyone, any and everyone who are trying to hear somebody who they do not believe in. Questioning any and everybody who wanted to hear but there was no preacher. Questioning everyone who wanted to preach, but they were not being sent. Child of God, I'm suggesting to you that it is the duty of every blood-bought believer to preach the word. Paul was challenging both people who were complacent to the gospel and people who were resisting the gospel. I want you to understand, Calvary, I'm charging you today to preach the word undiluted. Preach the word. If it is written, then I want you to preach it and teach it until men and women realize that God is still a good God. Preach the word, preach the word because Christians have become complacent these days. The duty of every Christian is to go on missionary journey for the Lord. The gospel must be preached to every kindred and every tongue barring no one. 
And if you understand that, then church will be more active and more lively when you understand that the word must be preached. For the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, you want to preach the word. You know, hearing me preach the word, be prepared in season, pastor, and out of season to correct and rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. You cannot escape it. You should not run from it. The word must be preached to all generation. The word must be preached to all ethnic groups. The word must be preached to every region and every corner in this world and if you don't believe me check your bible jesus commissioned us in matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 he said go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo he said i am with you always until the end of the it doesn't get better than that. The word must be preached. Everybody ought to know. And so I charge you as you are entering into to a season of evangelism to preach the word. And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we'll continue to preach the word. Child of God, I'm saying we will continue to preach the word. And so I say... So I said, rose then soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna, for Christ is captain of the mighty throng. For the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to to me, I hear Christians sing, uh, lift Jesus higher from this earth to where? Eternity. He said, if I be, be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It is with that I suggest to you in closing, beloved friends, that when you prioritize preaching, your feet becomes beautiful. And I'm not talking about your literal feet. I'm talking about your, your pathway to success. I wish I had a few people who can testify that it is because I have been preaching God's words why I look this good. You're not hearing me. I'm living proof that the gospel takes you places. I'm a product of the gospel ministry. When we take God's word seriously, God takes our business seriously. And some preachers say when we take care of God's business, God takes care of us. Because, but listen, people don't understand these days that you need, to, you need to seek God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Bible says, and all is righteousness and then everything else will be added unto you. I, 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 I am out of time, Calvary, but, 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 but just excuse my, excuse my, 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 my uh, I don't want to say Jamaica now. I don't care. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I, I, but, but I just want to boast a little bit in Jesus Christ. Can I? Because I am a product of the gospel. And I'm trying to suggest to all of you that it's because I am I'm preaching the word why my path looks bright. And there are people inside here who can tell you that if they were not preaching the word, they would not be where they are today. Thank God that even though trials and tribulations come, I am still basking in God. God's glory and I don't look like half the things I've been through it's because I have been preaching God's words and so I say to you Calvary look at me now my feet are beautiful because God has his hands over every single one of us he commissioned us to preach the gospel he commissioned us to tell the world about him he commissioned us to baptize them in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the Holy Ghost and he said 
said, I want you to understand, don't fear anybody because I am with you always to the very end. When, pray, when people ask you, what is your secret to success? Tell them it's because you understand how to preach the word. When they ask you, what is your claim to fame? Tell them it is because you preach the word. I am no Chris Brown, but look at me now. I'm standing in the presence of God because God has blessed me. God has taken care of me. The songwriter says, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong, then my living may not be in vain. Can I suggest to you that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Hey, I want you to understand that my feet are beautiful because I understand how to prioritize the word. I want you to understand that I'm basking in God's glory. How shall they call on him who they have not believed in? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they preach unless they have been sent? Hey, look at me now. God has blessed me. Look at me now. I'm walking in faith. Look at me now. I'm walking in favor. Look at me now. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can I suggest to you that old folks say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. You don't know it? Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And I want to testify like Jeremiah that every time I want to pack up ministry, every time I want to be done with this, and I'm about to sit down, it is as though fire is shut up in my bones. So I want to declare, look at me now, for I shall not die, but live and declare the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And look at me now. I'm a product of the ministry. All hail the power of Jesus. Let angels glory to God. Hey. Look at me now. Look at where God has brought me from. Every now and again, Christians ought to look at where God has brought them from. Look at where he has brought them to. And say, we've come this by faith. And we're leaning on. Say, and we are trusting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I need a oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Oh, we have come. Try. 
trusting, trusting in his holy word. Now go of God and I was preaching to the saved and the unsaved and we have taken enough time and we're about to be over with divine service but we're not leaving until we pray for somebody we're not leaving until we pray for somebody you're here today you're unsaved and you're saying pastor pray for me because I want to look as good as you. Hello. You see the problem with Christian is that sometimes we don't we don't we don't dress like royalties. We don't talk like royalties. Huh? And so they don't know that we are prince and princesses. They don't they don't know that. But I want to charge you today to look your best always. Speak well. Smell good. And look better than all of them. Because you're God's child. And if God's on this earth, then you ought to look good here and over there. We are God's people. Chosen generation. Royalties. So we ought to look like it sound like it and so when people look at us they will know that God has been good I, I, you have your trials you have your tribulations but every now and again when you come on the outside people need to know that God is still alive and he's still working for you is there somebody who wants to look beautiful today will you come we've come this far by faith Will you come? Let us pray for you. God bless you, my we sister. Come this far by faith. Oh, 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 oh. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. somebody else and we're waiting we're waiting to pray for someone else won't you come won't you come we're trusting we're trusting is there one more for Jesus God bless you my brother. is there one more somebody God is about to move in this place oh bless his name and let me talk to those online you want us to pray for you you need deliverance you need healing you need recommittal. It's your time to use the QR code on the screen. Come on, you've come this far by faith. It's God's blessing. It's God's 
deliverance. It's God's leading. Oh, glory to God. God bless you. God bless you. Is there one more for Jesus? Is there one more? Pastor will be praying for you. Is there one? Trusting in his holy word. He never failed. He never failed. He yeah. Heads up out, eyes up. Somebody else who needs to walk for Jesus today. There is still somebody else. The chimes of time bring out the news. Another day is done. Someone slipped and fell now is that someone you you may have longed for added strength your courage to renew do not be disheartened now do not be disheartened cause we've got news for you somebody needs to hear it it is no secret hallelujah what God can do what is done for others my God he'll do for you he'll do it for you with arms wide open with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret it is no secret what God can do just one more time with that chorus it's no secret it is no secret hey hallelujah what God can do what is done what is done for others he'll do for you with arms wide open arms wide open i 
God. He can do it for my you. God will do he can do it for you. He can do it for you. With arms wide open. With arms wide open. He'll pardon you. Glory to God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We magnify your name, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for in this very space, battles have been won that we cannot see. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. For in this space, yokes are broken, chains are crushed. Though we cannot behold them with the naked eye, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Heavenly Father, practical theology, relevant for your church, and even for those not yet members of your church. What a joy, Heavenly Father, it is to know that the gospel that transformed us can transform those around us. Lord, it makes a difference when we look at people and know that as bad as they are, if placed in the hands of God, they can become better than we are. Only God can do that. Thank you, Jesus. For though many of us have forgotten, others considered us beyond redemption. But grace, glorious grace, God's marvelous grace, found us in clubhouses, found us drunk at the roadsides, found us engaged in illegal activities, found us champions of illicit acts, and when grace was done, we did not recognize ourselves. When grace was done, when God was done with us, the devil couldn't recognize us though we were partners in crime with the devil thank you Jesus for the transforming power of amazing grace hallelujah thank you Jesus for the power of grace now we live and move and breathe in freedom but we know what it's like to be locked up and locked down by the devil with no light in sight. But Jesus makes a difference. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, 
For Jesus made a difference in me. Thank you, Jesus. For you can make a difference in those who have walked to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. You can make a difference in those who are still in the pews but need to be at the altar. Thank you, Jesus, for you can make a difference in those online who weren't at church because they have had enough of church. Those online who aren't at church because they have no inclination to go back. Those who are not at church, Jesus, because their hope has been lost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Waymaker, Bridge Builder, Mountain Mover, Light in the Darkness, Life Saver, Life Transformer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I have an overwhelming sense of gratitude today. I do not have enough time. I do not have enough tongues. I do not have enough vocal power this morning to say thanks enough. So I submit to you, God, from the basis compartment of my heart. Thank you, Jesus for what you've done in my life for what you've done in our lives for what you've done in the lives of everybody who is saved in this house today for what you've done in the life of the preacher for what you will do in the lives of those who walk to the altar thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for grace taken for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for victories that we have forgotten. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for deliverances we are afraid of mentioning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for breakthroughs we could not see coming. Thank you, Jesus. But most of all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for amazing grace. Thank you for transforming our lives and making of us what we could not see possible to be made of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen and amen. church. Uh, the closing hymn will be uh, hymn 610, Stand Like the Brave.
benediction is taken from Philippians 4. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and have and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Sister Sophie, I am Addy. Do you see me now? Sister, look at me now, Just, Sister Sophie. I know, right? Look at me now. Isn't God really good? Isn't God? God is good. Yes, he Because really God is. is real. Yes, yes. In all honesty, there are those out there who do not believe, and we, we have a job to spread his word because they do not know. Mm -hmm, that's so And true. all we can say is, look at me now. I know, that was a word. I really, really, my takeaway... Um, is many of us are zealous but we don't have the knowledge and having the zeal minus knowledge equals arrogance wasn't that something so we really want to moving forward from this evangelistic experience that we delve in knowing who we are and whose we are so that we can impact others who really need to know about Jesus and his soon coming. Because honestly, honestly, it is our job to spread the word and the word is universal. Yes, it is. Everyone deserves to, to know mm -hmm. whether you're black or white, tall or short. That's you so did true. deserve to know. If people Amen. Don't know. Amen. And that is the reality of it. Honestly, church, aren't you guys just glad you guys came out today? Yeah. It's kind of sad to me you guys missed yesterday kind of waiting and excited to see tomorrow honestly everybody come out tomorrow you have zoom you have live the church we have seats to fill mm -hmm. tomorrow will be another word and there are words to come because god is coming soon but he's not here yet and there's still so much more that we can learn and can spread yes. so we're looking forward to seeing everyone the church packed like this on tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock when Pastor Williams will give his final presentation on the weekend. May God bless you as we um, move out to have our lunches and just continue to experience the goodness of God. Yes, thank you all for coming out here today. There is Bible class at 4.30 followed by AYN Vespers. There also is a baby shower for Stacy and Gerthy at 7.30 on these church grounds. So make sure you guys show up for that. Guys, do not forget, there are children here wanting to become pathfinders, but there are adventurers. 
the applications are still going around. Please make sure you grab one for your child because through adventures, you can't spread the word. We thank you all for being here on Zoom, on live, and in person. I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone.